Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer at All Saints Anglican Church in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday after Trinity. God is love, and he that abideth in love abideth in God, and God in him. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth stand in awe of him. The hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Please join me in an opening prayer. O God, our Heavenly Father, who, who has taught us by thy, thy Son, Son, Jesus Christ, that the, that the true, true worshipers are those who worship you in spirit, in spirit and, in and in truth. Grant, Grant that, that we may not draw near, near to, to you with our, with our lips, lips, while our, our hearts are far, are far from, from thee, but that, but that all, all that is within us may magnify, magnify thy holy name through the same, same Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and met confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by His infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have, we have erred, erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have, we have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But, but thou, O Lord, have, have mercy upon us, miserable, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty Father, who of thy great love didst give thy dearly beloved Son to die for us. Grant that through his cross our sins may be put away and remembered no more against us, and that, cleansed by his blood and mindful of his sufferings, we may take up our cross daily and follow him in newness of life until we come to his everlasting kingdom through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. O come, let us worship. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let, Let us, us heartily rejoice, rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pamela will now share the first lesson. The first lesson is written in the Epistle of St. Paul to the Philippians, the third chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk, so as ye have us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, 
from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change this lowly body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Here ends the first lesson. The psalm for today is Psalm 8, and we read it responsively by the half verse. O Lord, our governor, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Thou that hast set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of very babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. That thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, even the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him. Thou hast made him but little lower than the angels. And dost crown him with glory and worship. Thou makest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. And thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. All sheep and oxen. Yea, and the beasts of the field. The birds of the air and the fishes of the sea. And whatsoever moveth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our governor, how, how excellent is thy name, name in all the world. The world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Pamela will now share the second lesson. The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. Then went the Pharisees, and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth, neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness, and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled, and left him, and went their way. Here endeth the second lesson. We will now say the cantate domino in unison. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and, and his, his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof, let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kadar doth inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rocks sing, let them shout from the top of the mountains, let them give glory unto the Lord, and declare his praise in the islands. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us join in a statement of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the King. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. 
O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, our refuge and strength, who art the author of all good godliness, be ready, we beseech thee, to hear the devout prayers of thy church, and grant that those things which we ask faithfully we may obtain effectually. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear thy power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The sermon will be brought to us this morning from our rector, Reverend John Matheson. Thank you, Barbara, and good morning. Thank you for joining us once again today. From St. Paul's epistle to the Philippians, for our citizenship is in heaven. And from St. Matthew's gospel, render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. In our modern world, when many think of what, a, what is Caesar's, they imagine a nice crispy salad with croutons and a lot of garlic or maybe even a cocktail invented in Calgary, a Bloody Mary laced with clam juice, the only crunchy thing about it being a stalk of celery. But of course, I'm only half serious. I'm sure most of you know who Caesar was, at least the most famous Caesar, first name Julius. It was the family name of the man to whom Shakespeare gave the immortal line, et tu, Brute, as his friend plunged a knife into him on that fateful day in 44 BC. Because of his fame, Julius's family name became a title. Those who wanted to be revered, revered as he was revered, hoping there was indeed something in a name. The name became a title, was so evocative that Ivan III, Ivan the Terrible he was called, after he married the daughter of the last Byzantine Caesar, in 1472 began to style himself as the Tsar of Russia. Not to be outdone, William I, King of the United Germany, in 1871, adopted the title Kaiser. The Tsar and the Kaiser are both gone, and European royalty have lost their power. But the word still evokes the idea of power, and so we speak of the Tsars of industry, or a Tsar within a governing political party. Put not your trust in princes, the psalmist tells us, doesn't he? Nor in the son of man in whom there is no help. But we do, don't we? He was at the mercy of those who themselves were Caesars and emperors and who crave absolute power that Jesus found himself. Ultimately, Jesus' blood was on the hands of Caesar's appointed official, Pontius Pilate, despite his declaration that he washed his hands of the whole business. The Caesar Pilate served was Tiberius Caesar, the stepson of the Caesar Augustus Caesar, who had been ruler when Jesus was born 33 years before. Tiberius, we are told, was a reluctant inheritor of the title, but empires, while they last, tend to take on a life of their own, and the absolute power and cruelty upon which they depend, continue no matter who is the titular head. And so was Tiberius's image that was on the coin that was given to Jesus when he said, show me the tribute money. The superscription read, Tiberius Augustus Tiberius Divi Augusti Filius Augustus, Caesar Augustus Tiberius, son of the divine Augustus. 
Caesar Augustus, you see, had been declared a god after his death. Apparently a designation Tiberius did not want for himself, but it was a tool to maintain the power of Rome. To the Jews, it was an abomination. And yet the religious officials who challenged Jesus, the Pharisees and the Herodians, quickly produced one. They had them in their pockets, just as, figuratively speaking, the Romans had the Jewish authorities in theirs. So that is the important historical context, context of today's gospel. As with all that Jesus said and did, there is a universal truth to, be, to the story, a truth that should guide the church and individual Christians even after nearly 2,000 years have elapsed. We should think of Caesar not just as the individuals who bore that title, but as the powers of this world in general, civil government, the powerful business leaders and the empires they have built, the power of the media in all its forms, every entity that would, if allowed, gain absolute power over us in opposition to the only power that is infinite, Almighty God. As we see in this short scene from Jesus' life, even religious institutions and those in authority within them can go astray. And if it is in their interest, collude with the finite powers of this world, finite powers that crave the infinite power of God. Some governments are called totalitarian for a reason. They seek total power over those they rule, a power that is in reality God's alone. The Pharisees and the Herodians made strange bedfellows. Although they had to stay on the good side of Caesar in order to maintain power over the lives of the people who followed their teachings, in the case of the Pharisees, strict obedience to the law of Moses, in principle, they were opposed to the occupation of Israel by any foreign power, any government that did not recognize the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Herodians, who took their name from the family who the Romans allowed to call their head the king of Judea, they were in collusion with Rome. Herod was not even a real Jew. He was from Idumea, a state to the south of Judah, and it was in his interest and the interest of his followers to make Caesar's interests their interests. Jesus had become their common enemy. Not to burden you with more context, but it's important to remember that this show me the tribute money incident took place just after Jesus had told the parable of the marriage feast and the two other parables that were pointedly and obviously directed towards the Pharisees. Pious hypocrites. They, like the emperor, had no clothes. Further, it is important to remember that these parables had been delivered in the temple in Jerusalem the day after Jesus had cleansed it by driving out the money changers and those who bought and sold animals for sacrifice. The religious authorities might have seen his actions as a trashing rather than as a cleansing. Jesus had alienated the authorities within his own church. Now he was to be challenged by the state, a state that dressed itself in the robes of divinity, Caesar Augustus Tiberius, son of the divine Augustus. The religious authorities knew that no matter how much of a threat Jesus was to them, short of stealthy assassination, which would have put them on the bad side of the common people, the only way to neutralize Jesus was to prove him a threat to the Roman Empire. Only Pontius Pilate, Caesar's representative, could sign his death warrant. If they could trick him into saying a good Jew should not pay taxes to the Romans, they would be well on their way to having him arrested. But as St. John tells us in his gospel, Jesus knew what was in man. Why are you trying to trick me, he asked. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and unto God that which is God's. The coin bore the image of Caesar. It belonged to him. Only the grip that he had on the people of his empire, maintained by violence or the threat of violence, gave it any value. In the end, of course, it had limited value because Caesar would die, his empire would die and pass away, despite his claims to be eternal. Other empires would rise and fall, many imitating the Roman Empire, but they too, no matter how self-confident, would pass away. In the words of Martin Luther, only the city of God remaineth. 
Caesar, civil government, wants to be given its due. Give unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Under ideal circumstances, civil or secular government cares for its citizens, provides services for those of all or no religion, health care, education, fire protection, and very importantly, defense. But those in authority in the state must never divinize the state or themselves. Render unto God that which is God's. The tribute money bore the image of a man. Each of us, every man, woman, and child, bears the image of our Creator. Render to God that which is God's. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. When Caesar, the state, begins to dictate what we can believe, what we can think, what we can say, it is overstepping its authority. Religious leaders have, and in many instances, continue to collude with the state, often with the best of intentions, but not always. Having just participated in Remembrance Day, I am conscious of what happens when the state, or any other Caesar would-be, business or uh, the media, any worldly power, and its leaders, present themselves as God. Let us pray for the maintenance of our religious freedom, and for the liberation of those who have lost theirs, those that we remember who still, in heart and conscience, are free. Let us pray that everyone may render to God what is God's. Remember, our true citizenship is in heaven. And so in the words of St. Peter, the words which are also our parish's motto, fear God, honor the King. Amen. We come humbly to the throne of grace, praying to the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for mercy and grace. In confidence, let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, who in loving kindness provided a ransom for our souls, we pray for the world created in love, for its nations and governments, especially those in positions of trust with authority over us, Charles, our King, Mary and Brenda, his representatives, and Justin, Blaine, John, Kathy, and Brad, and all who work with them for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Son, incarnate Word, our prophet, priest, and King, we pray for the Church, created for your glory, for its ministry, that it may reflect your love. We pray for all who minister, both lay and ordained, especially David, our Archbishop, and the clergy and lay readers of our diocese and parish. Give them your grace to fulfill their high calling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer due to war, poverty, hunger, homelessness, and persecution, with special remembrance of the conflicts in Ukraine and Russia, and in Israel and Gaza. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who travel by land, water, and air, that they may come safely to their destinations and return home in safety. Protect and guide all who work in places of danger and difficulty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Spirit, the Spirit of joy and health, we pray for families and individuals, all created in your image, we remember those celebrating birthdays this week, Megan, Tim, Audrey, Lucinda, and Julian. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the living and the dead, we remember all those who have departed this life in your faith and fear with special remembrance of Brian Murphy, praying that, rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow the good example of all the saints especially the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Andrew the Apostle and St. John the Baptist, our patrons, as well as Charles Simeon, Hugh of Lincoln, Margaret of Scotland, and Hilda of Whitby, whom we remember this week, that with them we may be partakers of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
and grant us your peace. Amen. Amen. Please join with me in a closing prayer. O God, our Father, who has, who has taught us that our citizenship is in heaven and has called us to tread a pilgrim's path here on earth, guide us, we pray thee, on our journey through this world to the, to the celestial city. Defend us from the perils that await us on the way. Give us grace to endure faithfully to the end and at last bring us to the eternal joy through the mercy of thy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. I thank you for joining us for worship this morning, and I pray that we have a lovely week in the grace and mercy of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To request weekly transcripts of each service in advance, email allsaints at nb.aibn.com.